Every single year, tens of thousands of boats venture out into the ocean, dragging cone-shaped weighted nets along the seafloor. As the boats move, the nets scoop up fish, prawns, oysters and whatever else lies in their path, trapping more and more animals as they go along. This is bottom trawling. And Monga Bay explains why this fishing practice is so controversial. In the mid-1300s, fishermen in Essex sent a petition to Edward III, the King of England at the time. They wanted him to ban a new kind of fishing gear, which some men were dragging along the bottom of the creeks to catch oysters. The gear was so heavy, the petition complained, that it would hit the bottom forcefully and destroy the seafloor. And the nets were so thick that they didn't just catch oysters but all kinds of fish. In fact, the men didn't know what to do with all this extra fish, so they fed them to pigs to fatten them up. The king set up a commission to investigate the matter, but there's no record of what happened next. What we do know is that this was only the beginning of the notoriety of bottom trawling. Today, there are more bottom trawlers in our seas than ever before. They are fishing farther and deeper than ever before. And the concerns around them have grown louder than ever before. Here's why. Bottom trawlers, like the name suggests, target marine animals that live at the bottom of the ocean. These include commercially valuable fish like rockfish, cod and flounder, as well as invertebrates like shrimps and mussels. But while the trawlers may start out targeting certain species, the weighted nets they drag end up catching all kinds of bottom-dwelling animals. Imagine trying to remove only a particular kind of tree from a forest by running a bulldozer through it. That's what bottom trawling can look like in the ocean. Bottom trawling lands massive amounts of catch, nearly 25% of all wild-caught marine animals every year, according to one estimate. But compared with other fishing methods, bottom trawling is disproportionately wasteful. It accounts for about 60% of all the fish discarded by various fisheries. Increasingly though, with animal feed and fish meal markets buying a variety of sea life, trawlers in some parts of the world are catching anything and everything they can. These anything goes fisheries have a name, annihilation trawling. Because trawler nets can catch anything, threatened species sometimes get entangled too, like loggerhead turtles, dolphins and species of sharks and rays. The dragging of heavy nets on the ocean floor also uproots immobile plants, corals and animals that other marine creatures depend on for shelter and food. Moreover, trawling can leave behind a cloud of sediments that can smother marine life. This disturbance can then change the nutrient levels and biochemistry of the water and reduce sunlight penetrating to the bottom. By stirring up seabed sediments, bottom trawling could also be releasing huge amounts of carbon dioxide every year, studies have found. But not all bottom trawlers are alike. Impacts of bottom trawling can differ vastly based on the size and scale of the trawler boats, the kind of trawl gear they use, and where in the ocean they fish. Industrial trawler boats, for example, can range from around 12 meters long to more than 100 meter long supersized vessels. Larger boats have the mechanization to haul massive volumes of sea life, so they catch a lot and often discard a lot. At the other end of the spectrum are smaller trawlers, about 8 meters long, owned by small-scale fishers. These usually operate in shallow coastal waters, landing smaller volumes of catch. Different kinds of trawling gear can also affect the marine environment quite differently. Otter trawling, for instance, uses a net that has two heavy wood or metal plates to keep its mouth open as the boat tows it along the seafloor. The weighted bottom of the net barely penetrates the sediments. By contrast, Trawling boats using dredges drag a heavy, flat or toothed metal frame designed to penetrate several inches into the sediment and scoop up shellfish. Hydraulic dredges do so while releasing a jet of water to loosen the sediment. Research has found that dredging, especially the hydraulic kind, is considerably more destructive than auto trawling. Bottom trawling impacts can also look very different in different parts of the ocean. Some habitats, like coral reefs, are particularly sensitive to trawling. Areas that regularly face natural disturbances like storms and storm waves may be comparatively resilient, researchers say. Another region that's especially sensitive to bottom trawling is the deep sea. Life there tends to grow and reproduce more slowly and live longer than organisms in shallower waters. So their recovery from overfishing can take a lot longer. For example, a study found that deep-sea organisms in the sea mounts of New Zealand still hadn't recovered from bottom trawling after 15 years. 
fishing in the deep sea is also difficult technically. So it's usually large vessels with extremely heavy gear that do the trawling there. And they can do far greater damage than small-scale trawlers fishing closer to shore. So unsurprisingly, conservation groups, international bodies, as well as fishers who use non-trawling gear have regularly demanded bans on bottom trawling. However, people involved in bottom trawling differ. They point out that despite its negative image, trawling provides a large chunk of the world's fish supply, and other fishing methods would be unable to plug the gap if bottom trawling were banned. Moreover, they contend that trawling bans could squeeze seafood supplies and raise the price of cheap nutritious food like shrimp, halibut, and sole. Trawling also supports the livelihoods of millions of fishers, fish sellers, port workers, processing plant employees, and exporters. This can't be overlooked, trawl fisheries managers say. They also contend that other mechanized fishing practices are harmful too. So bottom trawling shouldn't be singled out. The solution, according to them, lies in more responsible bottom trawling. Fishery scientists and managers say that bottom trawling can be made less destructive if you pay attention to local contexts, like adjusting the frequency of trawling according to how quickly the sea life can recover in a region or simply keeping trawling away from sensitive ocean habitats. Some countries, for example, have initiated zoning and seasonal bans on bottom trawling to allow fish populations to bounce back. Some governments also offer relief assistance to trawl fishers during these closed seasons to make up for the loss of livelihood, though it's sometimes controversial. The impacts of bottom trawling can also be reduced by choosing trawling gear that's less destructive or by adopting design changes that reduce bycatch. For example, many trawlers fit turtle excluder devices into their nets that allow larger animals like sea turtles to escape if they get caught. Still, more responsible and less destructive trawling isn't going to be easy to achieve. After all, bottom trawling has remained controversial since its emergence several centuries ago. Petitions have come and gone, but this fishing practice has only continued to grow.